Okay, welcome to City Service. I'm City Councilor Mary Ann LaBarge Chair, and I'm joined by Ward 2 City Councilor Karen Foster, Vice Chair. Ward 1 City Councilor Michael Quinlan is coming in. He's stuck in traffic, but we should be seeing him coming in shortly. And we have Ward 7 City Councilor Rachel Mayor. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Roll call, Laura. Councillor Labarge. Present. I'm Councillor Foster. Here. Councillor Mayori. Here. And Councillor Quinlan, we know, is not present. I would like to announce that this meeting is being audio video recorded. Next on the agenda, public comment. Is there any member in the public who would like to address the committee and any subject? Do you see any here? No, I just don't us. See anything. Okay. Um, we have no public comment. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of July 26, 2021. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Roll call, Laura. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. And Councillor Mayori. Yes. Still don't see Councillor Quinlan. Okay, the motion is unanimous. We have on our agenda a discussion with the Northampton Housing Authority Board of Commissioners Chair, Marilyn Richards. And we all know Marilyn Richards. <laughs> I've worked with her oh. as a city councilor. We work together. Her and I, we stopped nude entertainment on King Street together yes. with the hair out of our heads. But anyways, it is an honor to have you here today, Marilyn. So I want oh, to thank welcome, you, Marianne. Yep. And I want to welcome you to City Service, Marilyn. We have invited you, Marilyn, as part of an informal question and answer discussion on general topics such as application process, complaint process. COVID policies in place and other possible questions, which you did get some from Rachel Miore also. If there are any questions to be asked by counselors, I prefer that they are asked after Marilyn does her presentation. And I'm going to start by turning the floor over to you, Marilyn. Thanks, Marianne. <laughs> I, I really appreciate the opportunity to um, come before you today. I think that I know before I went on uh, housing authority, I was so, somewhat familiar with it, but not as much as, certainly not as much as I am now. So uh, I welcome the opportunity to sort of educate uh, folks because uh, it's a, sort of a complicated beast, I shall say. <laughs> uh, so first of all, um, well, as you know, my background is causing trouble with Marianne <laughs> number one, uh, but I was a city councilor for Ward 3, and uh, after that, I was on planning board for about, I don't know, four or five years, can't remember, and then uh, the housing authority, and I'm really enjoying this uh, appointment, I'd have to say. It's, uh, it's fun and worthwhile. So um, as you probably know, I'm just going to give a little overview, then I'm going to get into some of the questions that you asked specifically. So, I mean, basically our overview is to, uh, to provide safe and affordable housing to um, residents of Massachusetts and uh, with, particularly Northampton. Um, and um, we like to, we'd like to be a leader in exceptional housing practice. And um, we'd like to be a good mem a member of our community and, uh, uh, we enjoy creating partnerships with uh, various people that we've worked with, although sometimes it's just not well known what we do. Uh, so basically, the Housing Authority is um, a developer, a builder, and administrator of uh, the public housing in Northampton. And we have, uh, just to give you a little overview, um, well, like I said, it was complicated. So we have federal properties, properties that were funded through the federal, you know, from the president to the Congress to 
you know, to um, the, uh, HUD housing, um, keep uh, housing the urban development. And then we have um, state properties that are funded through the state, which is, um, um, e well, it used to be EOCD. Um, uh, anyway, um, so we have Florence Heights, which is a federal property. Uh, and we have um, McDonald House. Uh, Florence Heights is a federal family uh, property with 50 units. And uh, McDonald House is federal elder and disabled, and that's 60 units. And Hampshire Heights is a state housing program, and that has 80 units. We have uh, elderly and disabled housing, which is Tobin Manor, Four Sander, Walter Salvo, Cahill. And all of these are um, uh, state. And we have 13 single family sites. And we also manage the Hampshire Regional Housing Authority of units uh, 22 in Huntington and um, 30, uh, 14 units uh, in Cummington and single family homes in Huntington also. Uh, so that's kind of, we're, we're pretty big. We have well over uh, 600 units. We also um, have the section eight certificates and we provide uh, uh, emergency housing for homeless and also uh, veterans. So one of the questions, <clears throat> excuse me, was <clears throat> about how we're structured. <clears throat> Pardon me. So um, basically you might think of us as a separate entity, um, separate like uh, organization um, that we have a board, which is what I'm on, uh, the commissioners. And there are now seven of us. There used to be five, but now there are seven. And uh, we hire and uh, super oversee the director, the executive director. So the executive director is the one that does all the operations. And um, this year we've made some substantial improvement as we now, uh, the executive director has assigned each facility a, um, a property manager. So when a resident has an issue, they go right to their property manager. That's how it's supposed to work. As we know, it doesn't always work like that. And, you know, uh, they, while they're in our units, we're the rental, we're the bricks and mortar, they're your constituents too. So with whatever ward they live in, you know, we, we share those uh, uh, tenants, i.e. constituents. Um, so as I said, there are seven members on the board right now. The governor has one appointee and the mayor uh, has uh, pretty much uh, the, the rest, um, two of which must be tenants. One is uh, from the housing partnership one is a labor appointee, and the remainder are community appointees uh, from, from, from the mayor. Um, so the board is the governing body, as you are, uh, to the city. So we're the governing body, and we uh, hire and supervise the executive director and make sure that we're going by all the many, many, many rules and regulations. For every step we take, I can guarantee you there's a regulation. I can get it for you, but I don't think you wanna have me recite them today. <clears throat> we hold monthly meetings uh, and our format is pretty much identical to yours. We have public comment, we have uh, tenant comment, we have staff comment and, um, uh, and so I said public comment and tenant comment. So we, we often have tenants come and, you know, as, as you do in your public comment, um, and we don't answer their questions or we, we listen. Okay, it's our time to listen. And then we get back to people with um, their issues. So by law, we, have, we operate under the same laws as you do as the city council. Uh, we post our meetings. Uh, through the city and our, uh, at our different sites. Um, we have open meeting laws, just like you do. 
And uh, so our, our, our really, we operate uh, just exactly as, as you do. So we have many city partners. Uh, there, there were lots of questions about the COVID and if we were still under COVID restrictions. We go by the city and we've worked with uh, our health department and Merida, um, you know, to try to ensure that our residents um, are safe and we provide them as much assistance as we can. And I'd like to, I, I really have to give a shout out to our staff, our executive director and our staff, because um, they came in they delivered food to residents. They tried, they delivered masks. They uh, tried to make sure that the residents' needs were met and, and not, as you can imagine, um, it was very hard people staying home. I'm sure all of us had a hard time staying home. Well, imagine what it's like in a building with 80 units or 60 units. Uh, and some of the folks, uh, you know, uh, uh, have different needs and, and it's very hard for them. So we tried to be as sensitive as we could. So there is a number, uh, if residents, one of the, probably the most important question that was sent to me by you guys was, uh, what do you do if a resident calls you? Well, not, you can't go in and fix a toilet or you can't <laughs> <laughs> but what you can do is get them to the right place, just as you would a city councilor. You know, quite often you have people call the right person at the DPW or the right person in the health department or the building inspector. Sometimes you have to do it for them because they're not able to do it by themselves. But um, if you call the main number and you know what site they're in, there's an extension for every site and that will get you in touch with the property manager. If the property manager isn't available at that moment, there's an uh, answering machine and the property manager uh, will get back to you. So it's actually a pretty efficient system. And as we all know, uh, everybody doesn't always go by the system. So, you know, you can count on that too. Uh, but just so you know, uh, they wouldn't call a board member. If they had uh, an issue, certain kinds of issues that may be appropriate before the board, uh, we would need to know that. In fact, uh, I meet regularly with our executive director and uh, she would let me know and that we would uh, take care of that situation. And also through public comment. Uh, sometimes I do get a communication from a resident and if I do, uh, I pick up the phone and call the executive director and we work out the problem. So um, that's basically kind of a little overview. I have to give a shout out to the Jim Nash. Uh, Jim is the city councilor in Ward 3. Not that I'm prejudiced for Ward 3 or anything, <laughs> but um, Jim is, Jim is uh, the councilor where Salvo House resides. And I would say that Salvo House is probably Oh, probably our most problematic uh, um, facility. And he's just been great. We've met with Jim, Kara and I have, uh, have met together and he's getting to know now what, um, when he needs to call us and just let us know um, some of the issues. So I just wanted to give um, a shout out to Jim. So I'll go right into the questions if you'd like. Um, so who's responsible for hiring and firing? It's the board, and that's all regulated. We have regulations that tell us what to do, how to do it, what the experience level is, what the salaries should be. Everything is very highly regulated. And yes, we do, uh, as I mentioned, hold regular board meetings. We are, have been having them on Zoom, uh, just like you. And uh, I don't know when we'll be back to regular meetings, but if we do, we've talked about having them at different sites and we have had them at different sites before, but we most often have them at the administrative offices, which are at the community room at McDonald House. And you're all invited to come to just listen or to participate or however you want, but you are invited. 
Um, how long is the waiting list was another question. Um, unfortunately, the waiting list is about two to four years, depending on preference, like what you're looking for. Do you need a two bedroom? Do you need, you know, what kind of uh, 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 unit do you need? So it could be up to four years. Uh, right now, we're, we're looking at two to four. And um, you can transfer to any housing authority in the state or go to select any housing authority in the state. Northampton residents get priority to our properties. And I would assume that in other areas, their residents would also uh, get priority. So that's, that's basically how that works. Um, I've talked about complaints. So hopefully you have a little better understanding of how to deal with those, because I know you will get them. Um, <clears throat> So you ask about COVID restrictions. We really follow the guidance of the Board of Health. So uh, the, what they're doing right now is what we're doing. What you're doing is what we're doing. And um, so that's, uh, we follow it pretty, pretty strictly. Um, how long can overnight visitors stay? Okay, here again, it gets complicated. If you're in a state facility by lease, Okay, every tenant has a lease. Uh, it's 21 days, and they have to let us know. Okay, so, uh, and the, the tenant is responsible for the behavior of that person, okay, in the unit. But they can stay up to 21 days. A federal lease, that's the McDonald House um, and um, so forth, that's... Um, uh, 14 days, okay? And that's all spelled out in the lease. So they know this and they know they're supposed to notify it. I can't say that there aren't people who slip through the cracks, but um, if they do, uh, we usually find out about it. And so we will give that person a gentle reminder and then a, a more serious reminder, particularly if there are problems. Do we have surveillance cameras? Oh, this is kind of a funny story. We have surveillance cameras at Salvo and McDonald's. Yes, we do. And at the same time, the city was going through all the issues on surveillance. Our people were begging for cameras. They were begging for cameras. And uh, we have a neighborhood watch. Uh, some of the residents have organized at Salvo House a neighborhood watch. and. Uh, so the, the cameras have really, really helped out. And I think the residents are very grateful for them. So yes, we do. Uh, do we have fire drills? We have a, a very sophisticated fire uh, system. We have worked with a company called Well Design. And Well Design comes in um, at a minimum annually and they test our system. And we are also subject to testing by the fire department. So uh, it's a sophisticated system that needs to be in compliance at all times. Um, let's see, what is the power structure? I think I went over that, but you can ask me questions. Who holds the director accountable? The board does. Also DHCD and HUD, okay? Depar department of Housing and Com Community Development. Um, so we make sure that all the regulations are followed and that we're in compliance with, uh, with everything going forward. And, um, how is she evaluated? Uh, we evaluate our executive director, uh, once a year, and we actually just finished that process this summer. And, uh, so all the commissioners fill out, um, um, their evaluation, get them back to me and I do a, a composite of, um, and we have a new tool this year and uh, which was a numerical system with comments. Um, what is the process for uh, tenant grievance? There's a whole, there's a whole process that we have. It's also regulated by law and uh, we have to have uh, I think it's a three-person committee, outsiders, so that um, 
again, it's regulated by law, and I'm happy to produce that for you. What we try to do is handle problems at the lowest level or, yeah, at the lowest level possible. So before it ever gets to me or anybody, it goes to our executive director. And then there is a committee that, that sits, that has a tenant on it, a labor person, and I forget who else, an outside party, I do believe. So um, that's kind of the questions that I think, I hope I didn't skip over anything, but I'm happy to just have an informal discussion and help me understand what more you'd like to know. Marilyn, we're talking, yep. I'm hearing you state an executive director you're in charge of, correct? Mm -hmm. And the board and also mm -hmm. a director, is that correct? You have a director and an executive director. No, it's the same thing. Yeah. It's, so it's only I just one use them. position. Yes, there's one executive director who is over, she has different people reporting to her. Okay. Like my, many of you may know Jack. Yeah. My question is, yeah. how do and how does your commission know what she is doing until the time that you go to go ahead and deal with her. I mean, how do you find out who lets you know how she's doing? Well, I, I think um, the best way to know actually how she's doing is through feedback from our funding sources, uh, you know, our uh, uh, reviews were constantly reviewed. And I have to say, we, we scored very, very well on those reviews. We got this year, we got a clean audit uh, with no recommendations. So that's another way. Also, I'm, I feel like I'm on 24 hour call with her and uh, she will call me if there's a big problem, she'll call me in the middle of the night. Uh, or if there's a less of a huge problem, she'll call me in the morning. So I meet with her probably once a week. So I know, I know what's going on, not only through our reviews and our feedback through our funding sources, yeah. but because, uh, you know, because I meet with her. And frankly, uh, also through public comment, uh, you know, our tenants, through tenant comments, they come and, you know, while they have a list of complaints and many are so legitimate, they also give kudos when kudos are, you know, are needed and expected. And they, they do, uh, they do appreciate some of the things that the staff and the director do for them. Okay. We also, one more question, um, had a resident from Walter Salvo um, who came to the Commission on Disabilities when we used to have our meetings at the Senior Center. And I think he was in the service. He's an elderly man and had great concerns. He didn't come once. He came several times of people that there was a serious drug problem going on at Walter Salvo's. Has that been straightened out or what's happening there? Well, it will never be uh, totally eliminated by the nature of any time you have a, an apart, any apartment building with 80 units or 50 units or whatever, right. you're going to have some activity going on that you don't like. Okay. However, that being said, we will call the police. If the resident lets us know, we'll, you know, we'll get the police there. They know us very well. The cameras have helped immensely. I mean, people sometimes piggyback in. So a resident will come in and somebody will come in right behind them, uh -huh. you know. So it hasn't been eliminated and it probably never will be. But um, I think, and the neighborhood, uh, the, the neighborhood watch, uh, some of our residents have been uh, central in starting the neighborhood watch and watching out for each other. It's 
I think it's improved, but I'm not going to tell you it doesn't happen. Yeah, right. I, I Unfortunately, right. it's I the understand. nature of the beast. I understand that, Marilyn. When you're looking at Walter Salvo's McDonald House, Fort Sanders, I have not heard anything about anything going on there or Joan Tobin, but basically it's been at Walter Salvo's yeah. that we were here. Yeah. Okay, thank well, you. Let me, let me point out, can I say one more thing? Yeah, uh, Let sure. me point out too, um, many of our residents, uh, because I think we're Northampton, have, um, dis have disabilities, okay? And some of those disabilities uh, are mental health disabilities, whether that be, you know, a, a whole range of mental health issues. And I think we have more because we're Northampton than uh, some other housing authorities, yeah. but we try to get services. We try to get them lined up with whatever services, be that substance abuse or uh, other mental health issues. Yeah. Are you, are you working? We try our best. Yeah. Are you working along with ServiceNet and so forth like that? Community action? Yeah. As, yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, ServiceNet, uh, we have a, a building that uh, ServiceNet has their people in. So we do work with ServiceNet. Oh, great. Great. Any other counselors would like to speak? I'm spoken out. <laughs> Karen Foster. Counselor Hi, Foster. Karen. Hi, sorry. I'm trying to do this with my phone. Marilyn, thank you so much for being here. I really um, appreciate this chance to learn more. And I, I guess for you, as I look at the waiting list for you know, sort of the more affordable housing throughout the region, is there sharing among the Northampton Housing Authority, community builders, um, wayfinders, you know, is there sharing of, of tenants or are you kind of all operating pretty independently on that? Well, we do operate independently. However, uh, again, that being said, I remember when, um, what was the uh, Northampton boarding house when they tore that down to build, you know, uh, some of the way we took, we took folks, you know, uh, into our facility from that facility so they weren't homeless. So, you know, we try to work, we work with, you know, a bunch of people and uh, the housing people. So, oh, Karen, I just want to compliment you on your newsletter. <laughs> I like, I read it on, uh, <laughs> you send it out over, you know, email. Are there, are there other questions? Thank you for Karen. saying that. I appreciate it. Cancel Rachel. Yeah. Right. I Thank you so much, Marilyn, for being here. This is, um, I've wondered about this for a while, and this is really clarifying. I, it's just, um, you know, I've been thinking, you know, as a counselor, I, you, about, you know, do our, do our zoning ordinances, you know, um, cover, you know, I, I, a lot of times MDL, you know, supersedes um, local ordinances. And so it's been hard for me to understand the, the kind of power structure around it. You know, I guess if we have general, city ordinances, those are covered, but I, I suppose that these federal and state laws that kind of govern these, these um, homes have their own and perhaps supersede that. I, I suppose if I had an example, it'd be easier to figure out. But um, so I, was, I, that, I have been wondering about the power structure um, and um, because I just wanna be able, as a counselor, I wanna be able to serve um, these residents, sure. and, and sometimes I don't. I'm not clear as as clear as um, as other um, housing situations about our authority there um, when they reach out. So it's kind of rare, actually, but I do get some uh, residents um, from the housing units reaching out. So um, I think I, I've gotten mm -hmm. it. I mean, it sounds like, um, but it does sound like the state and federal, you know. Um, regulations would supersede any kind of city. Um, I guess I'd have to come in and come, it'd be easier if I had an no, example. No, I mean, no, you don't think so. uh, the example that comes to my mind, don't ask me why, but is the noise ordinance, all right? Okay, so that's we, a we go example, by the, yeah. Yeah, we, and we go by the noise ordinance. So we okay. go by the city ordinances, yeah. Oh, okay. And if there is uh, something that 
supersedes. I don't, I don't off the top of my head know what it is, but I, I we go by all cities. Uh, oh, that's good to know. The, the mask ordinance, okay, that's, you know. Right, local. Yeah. We go by that. <laughs> Well, that, thank you for yeah. that. And that's actually a perfect yeah. example. I was trying to think of something um, that comes up like that. Um, and I don't want to, you know, I want to respect that we send you questions ahead of time. So if, if, if you don't feel comfortable answering this, it's fine because I didn't send it to you. But I've been hearing, you know, one of the residents talking about, you know, grumbling about gardens and planting. And I don't really understand that whole thing. And since I didn't put in a question, Marilyn, don't feel like you have to pick that one up. But if, if you if you feel comfortable, you know, I, I, I'm... Yeah. Hmm. Well, it's a big one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable telling you uh, yeah. there is a system. Okay. Right. We have limited gardening space. And um, so at the different facilities, they apply for those mm -hmm. and then they get them. All right. But they also can impede on a sidewalk or, and we get some residents who don't go by the rules. You know, yeah. there are rules. And, um, you know, if they don't go by the rules, we ha actually have, and a wheelchair, let's say, can't get by, we actually have to have them remove the plantings if they've planted them so close to the sidewalk where it's difficult. And we have to be pretty strict about it. Otherwise, people be planting trees and God knows what everywhere. Yeah. So I don't know if that helps at no, all. No, that's very helpful. And so do you th are the rules, would they be different? Are they kind of uniform or like the federal rules and the state rules, depending on the housing unit? Uh, or do you I think don't kind know of that there are any. I think there are rules uh, uh, when it comes to the gardening. Yeah. Because not yeah. every facility has gardening space. Uh. But it's it's been very therapeutic and wonderful for the residents. And I know when we ha had the garden tour, if you, Jerry Budger, um, bless his soul, um, would uh, have people go over to, to Salvo and, and McDonald and, and look at the gardens because they do a nice job. They do a great job. And they eat, have the food, you know, they can eat the food from the gardens. Right, and I remember Marilyn. I, I have a vague memory of a, it was pre-COVID probably, but when we you know, there was a community outreach where you know general community members went and helped with planting. It's one of the housing units, and I was just thinking how nice that is to kind of you know I kind of thinking of ways to to kind of like integrate the the, the housing units you know um, complexes more into you know the larger community, and I that struck me as a great way to get you to know your neighbors. If you're not part of mm -hmm. the housing, so I, I I would really support that kind of I thought I don't I don't even remember who organized that, but it, I, I just remember thinking that was such a great thing and and thank you for answering that, that question, Marilyn. Yeah, I appreciate it. Well, that thank you, Rachel, for asking it because it is a big deal in the spring. You'll always hear about it at at tenant comment, but that's our goal. You just sort of stated our goal is to have our um, residents feel like not only are they a housing, like we here at Bear Hill feel like we're the Bear Hill community, but we also feel like we're part of the greater Northampton community. So that's how we'd like our residents to um, to feel. And, you know, we're really grateful. We got the um, money for the Florence Heights playground. Yep. Um, and uh, so that's going to, that was a wonderful thing that the whole community supported and I don't know whether you saw in the paper but we just had somebody come up and fix bicycles for kids yes and uh yeah which I thought was another kind of a wonderful um thing but anything that we can do to help us feel more part of the overall community and help the community feel you know part of us is yeah is a good thing I well, I don't want to dominate, but I just leave with a comment that, um, you know, if you ever have ideas and ways that counselors could be, you know, that we could be more proactive and or with that goal of integrating, I would love, you know, um, along the way, if, if you if there's some brainstorms around that, I would love if, if for, for you all to feel free to reach out to us because I talking to other counselors, I know we'd like to and sometimes we just don't always know the best way mm -hmm. to support um, support that so um, feel free. Yeah, that, other board that, members that were here, if, if we can help out with that. Thank you. You know, one of the, oh, 
Oh, uh, I want to thank uh, Council Moriori because I thought that was very valuable with the yeah. statement she just stated. Councillor Labarge, um, if if you will, I mean, I think that might be a good idea to have a maybe a like a coffee where where counselors could come in and meet Kara and some of the staff, some of the senior staff, if you would like to do that. Sure. I that could arrange like that. Plan. We'll invite Sounds Laura easy enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll invite Laura. <laughs> I like that idea very much. Thank you, Marilyn. I, I have Thank one you, more Council. last question, Marilyn. Do you have an attorney on that commission? Uh, we do not at present have an attorney on the commission. We have a, a staff, we have an attorney that's on our staff, Tom O'Connor. And then we also have an HR attorney, Jim Pender. Okay. Uh, that we use. So we use them constantly. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate but, that but information. Uh, our attorney deals with tenant issues all the time, uh, oh, our staff great. attorney. Councilor Quinlan. Thank you. Uh, to And Marilyn, thank you very much for the presentation. I want to apologize first for being late. Uh, oh, just this stuck, on, stuck on Damon Road, uh, like, like, the, like the rest of Northampton. Um, but uh, my fellow uh, Whiting Street Fund alum, uh, Marilyn Richards. Uh, so it's good to see you, and I'm glad you were here to, to talk. <laughs> so thank you. Um, I did have a chance to to tour uh, the gardens at Salvo House just this weekend. Uh, Joella oh. Tarbutt in Springfield reached out to me and yeah. invited me to come over for a walk. So we we had a chance to walk around the building a little bit, and that was very fun to see. Uh, and, good for and, her. And there was a lot of pride there. I agree with you about the feeling. And, and the word therapeutic that you used was also used by two residents that were talking about their, their little gardens. So uh, that was, uh, it was really, really exciting to see. Uh, the only question I had, and I, I think I know the answer, I just wanted to give you a chance to, to, to explain it a little bit, is you talked a little bit about in the evaluation process, accountability to the funders, which I think is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, and you also, I guess I would just ask you, you feel very confident that you also have good accountability to the tenants um, because that's you know obviously what when we as counselors hear from people we hear from the tenants uh, with concerns and I think yeah. that's what Councilor Mayor was asking about what the rules are around gardening and so forth because we I know that I've heard from people about that too uh, so I just it would just ask you feel very confident there uh, about about that accountability as well um, that that again is a a tricky one because we most always don't deal with tenant issues. The staff deals with tenant issues, uh, but through public comment, I mean, that is a place or, or, I mean, you know, people do contact us and then we try to solve their problems. So, you know, I mean, I probably think it's about as good as it, uh, it's as good as it gets. We have a really great commission we have uh, right now three residents uh, on the commission. In fact, our governor um, governor appointee is a person with a disability. Uh, uh, two people with disability. We have um, uh, we're racially very spread out. Uh, so I think we have we're set up now to have a, a commission with seven people on it that can be even more responsible to the needs of the tenants. That's our goal. Do we always achieve it? No. Do we want to? Yes. <laughs> right, right. Well, right, that's, and I appreciate that answer because I think that's important, right? To understand right. that none of us are gonna be perfect, but but we're gonna be pretty darn good if we try to be perfect. So mm -hmm. uh, you right, know, I'm grateful right. for that answer. Uh, and also grateful for Councilor Maori mentioning that, you know, as a counselor, anything, <laughs> If anything, you ever identified something that we could do to be helpful, you know that would be outstanding. I'd be I'd be honored to to help in any way I could, and uh, and I would love to have a coffee uh, with with your with your group. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marilyn, for being with us this afternoon. It was very appreciated, and yes, we need to get together. To have that coffee or tea, I know we can't yeah. have beer, we can't have wine or cheese, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we can do that. When coffee's, we coffee's good, coffee's good. Exactly. But thank you. Yes. Thank you all and so I much. I think and, we'll have you come back again. We'll have you come yeah. back again for some follow-ups. This was very, very interesting. Thank you dearly. 
All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I will leave you at this point. Okay. Thanks. Bye, Mary. Bye, everyone. Bye, Mary. Bye. Okay. We're going to move on. Number six items referred to committee um, 21.316B appointments to various committees referred by city council on August 19th, 2021. Um, if you look, we did have, which I did talk with this applicant, Monica um, V. Grezzi Moulet, and we had a lengthy, lengthy talk. She had to reject as an applicant due to her own family obligations. So that was understandable. And if you had looked at her resume, it was really unbelievable. She would have been great, but at this point, she could not be able to obligate her time on the board at the senior center. So I just wanted to explain that. And now we're gonna go on to Energy and Sustainability Commission. We have one reappointment and that is Benjamin Will, 123 Audubon Road Leeds, term July, 2021 through June, 2024, a reappointment. Um, I would be willing to accept the motion on the reappointment of Benjamin Will to the Energy and Sustainability Commission. Move, move to re, um, recommend reappointment. Second. second. Okay. Um, we have a motion and a second to forward Benjamin Wheel with a positive recommendation to full city council. Is there any discussion? Roll call, Laura. Councilor Labard. Yes. Councilor Foster. Yes. Councilor Maori. Yes. And Councilor Quinlan. Yes. The motion is unanimous. Planning board. We have two reappointments. We have Melissa Fowler, 87 Chesterfield Road, Leeds, full member, term July 2021 through June 2024. And we also have um, Christian, I think it's Tate, 46 Upper Road, Leeds, associate member, term July 2021 through June 2024, also a reappointment. So I would... We had the two reappointments to the planning board, so I'd be willing to accept the motion for the two reappointments to the planning board. Move a positive recommendation for reappointment to the planning board for both people. We need a second. second. Okay, we have second. a motion and a second to forward the two reappointments, Melissa Fowler and Christian Teat to the planning board with a positive recommendation to full city council. Is there any discussion? Roll call, Laura. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. I, I saw her unmute briefly, so I think that was a yes. Yes. Uh, oh. Council yeah. <laughs> Councillor Maori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Okay. Now we have Transportation and Parking Commission, and we have two reappointments. Jamie Albro Fisher, 50 Manhand Street, Northampton, term July 2020 through June 2023, reappointment. Adam Novick, 17 Hooker Avenue, Northampton, term July 2021 through June 2024 with a reappointment. So I'd be willing to accept the motion for the two reappointments to the Transportation and Parking Commission. Yes. Move to positively Move to recommend. Sorry. Okay, so we have Karen Foster and we have Rachel Muir. Sorry, Karen. Sorry. We have a motion and a All second good. to forward the two reappointments. Um, Jamie Albro Fisher and Adam Novit to Transportation and Parking Commission with a positive recommendation to full city council. Any discussion? Roll call, Laura. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. <laughs> Councillor Maori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Okay. The motion is unanimous. Zoning Board of Appeals. We have one reappointment. David Bloomberg, 86 Vernon Street, Northampton term, July 2021 through June 2024 for a reappointment. I will be willing to accept the motion for the reappointment 
of David Bloomberg to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Move a positive recommendation for reappointment for David Bloomberg. Second. So that was Councilor McQuinlan uh, and Rachel Miori. So we have a motion and a second to forward the reappointment of David Bloomberg to the Zoning Board of Appeals with a positive recommendation to Forest City Council. Any discussion? Roll call, Laura. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Foster. Yes. Councilor Maori. Yes. And Councilor Quinlan. Yes. Motion is unanimous. So now new business. Um, we have our city clerk, Pam Powers, coming in at our next city service committee meeting on October 4th. So since it is going from elected to non-elected, if there's any questions that you would like to ask Pam, please send them to both Laura and I. We would appreciate that so we can send them off to Pam, okay? All right, we need a final motion. Move to adjourn. Second. Okay. Roll call, Laura. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Foster. Yes. Councilor Maori. Yes. And Councilor Quinlan. Yes. Great. Thank you. Okay. Laura, go back Thanks. to forgetting about us for a while, please. Uh, <laughs> okay. I know. It's only a quarter of five. Painless. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good evening, everybody. Yeah, you too, Laura. Bye, Bye everyone. Guys.